Welcome to the Friday edition of Juan's World. I'm going to continue with my discussion of religious principles today rather more generally than last time because I've realized that there were some basic ideas that I need to explore in order to get at what I was talking about last time when I spoke about certain Buddhist traditions including meditation and mindfulness and how they've been appropriated by people and often misunderstood. I also believe that Christianity is grossly misunderstood <laughs> um, as well as other religions and so I'd like to get into that a little bit more. Now really my first topic is just going to be religion as a general term and maybe I'm going to be <laughs> a little bit over general when I say that any sentence that begins with religion is is likely to be wrong and that's simply because there isn't a good definition of religion anyway and certainly there isn't one that people habitually use. They will say religion causes wars or they'll say I am spiritual but I'm not religious and so on which is just a way of showing that they're not really clearly aware of religion as a total concept. Rather, I'd prefer to talk about religions, plural, and try to get away from just defining religion in totality. There are religions like Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, Jainism, and on and on and on. There are some very small isolated religions in the world. There are some massively global ones, you know, some that are related to each other. And by just saying religion is, I don't know how you can accommodate all of those differences. So that's my starting point. Usually when people say religion, they mean whatever religious tradition they were brought up in. And so when they are fighting against a particular religion, they have a tendency to generalize from what they know to everything. And that was part of my point last time, is that people in the United States in particular, for the most part, not all, but for the most part, don't know anything about Buddhism or know very little, know a few generalities. They don't know any specifics. And people, particularly on YouTube, when they say they are atheists and then argue against religion, don't understand that there are a number of religions that don't require belief in a god. And that includes Hinduism in particular, but also Buddhism. That God is not the center point of those religions. So when they're arguing against the belief in God, 
typically what they're arguing against is some sort of medieval idea of God with a long gray beard sitting on a throne somewhere in the sky. I know, for example, that Cenk Uger of the Young Turks talks about the sky god as his way of putting down people who believe in a certain kind of god within Christianity. Well, you know, to some extent, arguing against those kinds of beliefs are fair. I mean, there are some people who do believe them, and you can argue against them. I certainly would. I don't think about God in these uh, literalistic terms of evangelical Christianity. But that doesn't really say very much. What bothers me is the way in which people put up straw men to defeat, but they're not really taking on bigger issues about what God is. And what I would argue is that they're not understanding, even when they're arguing against Christianity, they're not understanding modern theology. And I mean by modern theology, not evangelical theology. I'm talking about the theology of people like Karl Barth or Dietrich Bonhoeffer and even more recent theologians. Now, there are celebrity atheists like Richard Dawkins who say, I don't want to read any theology I, any more than I want to read about leprechauns. I don't believe leprechauns exist, so I'm not going to read about them. Okay. Um, I pretty much agree that leprechauns don't exist, although I do like to read about them. I like to know what it is that people believe in. When it comes to religion, that is just a very weak position. To say, I don't believe in God, when you don't even know how people define God, is ridiculous. The other problem I have is a problem that is what we could call um, Christian-centric. That is, a lot of people will argue against religion, saying that people are religious because they equate religion and morality and that you don't need to be religious to have a firm moral foundation. I also agree and I think it's a big mistake to believe that the centerpiece of modern Christianity is morality. It isn't. Now it is true that Judaism and Christianity both have as important principles the principle of sin and of forgiveness. No question. And in some Christian traditions, such as a Roman Catholic tradition, there's a doctrine of original sin. We're all born with original sin because we're all descendants of Adam and Eve and they sinned originally, therefore we inherit their sin, and therefore we are born to sin, you know, etc., etc., etc. You can make morality the center of your religion if you want to, but I don't. Spirituality is the center of my religion, and that needs to be unpacked, probably not, <laughs> not, not today. But the thing is that I think of spirituality as being the, the centerpiece of all things that we call religion, although it's very loose and I'll have to unpack that in more detail at some point. But it basically for me gives a lie to people who say, well, I'm spiritual 
but I'm not religious. What they're really saying, I believe, is that they have certain kinds of spiritual needs and connections, but that the religions that they know do not provide that spiritual desire. Well, as far as I'm concerned, that's the fault of the religions that they know. It's not the fault of religion in general. It would be very, very strange to say that I am spiritual, but I don't like Buddhism. Because the center of Buddhism is spirituality. So, that's my first point. So, in a previous video, a long time ago, I talked about the bogus debate or dichotomy between religion and science. And one of the points I tried to make is that religion and science are pursuing different agendas. And that it's perfectly possible to accept certain kinds of religious faith and also accept certain scientific principles. They're not in conflict. They've come in conflict if you make certain claims, like if you claim that Genesis 1 is a literal description of the birth of the universe, then you're going to come into conflict with astrophysics. But I'm not willing to accept that religion is a substitute for science or that there is this God of the gaps notion that somehow or other that religion is about things we don't understand and therefore as we understand more and more about those things the domain of religion shrinks. I think that's just a false dichotomy because religion, if I can use <laughs> the general term, let's, let's just take Christianity as an example. Christianity does not have to be about explaining the origin of the universe or the origin of anything. It can be about something completely different. As I said earlier, it can be about spirituality. And in that respect, Buddhism and Christianity have certain things in common. Not a lot, but some things where their ideas are closely allied in some ways. That prayer, for example, in the Christian tradition can be uh, simply asking for something, you know, make me better, um, give me money. <laughs> but that, you know, that is not in any sense what Christian prayer can be. Pr Christian prayer can be very close to Buddhist meditation if it's approached in a certain way. I was going to say correct way. <laughs> what I mean is my way. That's, that's really uh, <laughs> way too egocentric of me. But the thing is that there are a lot of things that um, various religions do that science just cannot do. Science is the domain of the physical. And if you believe that the physical is all there is, well, then you may not be interested in one or other religion because you may think that the non-physical doesn't exist. All right, well, let's be fair. What counts as the physical? seems to change a lot um, and the domain of science also changes a lot. Let's just take a simple example. An idea is not physical. Where do ideas come from? 
Can science tell us that? Well, up to a point, yes. Psychology can help us explore what ideas are. But philosophy is a lot better at it. And philosophy is certainly not science. We also can get mired in problems like where does the mind reside and how does it operate? How do I make a decision? And when I make that decision, let's say my body moves. We cannot reduce it to uh, neurons firing in the brain or chemical processes in the brain. It's not enough. It's, it, that's too reductionist to go from the abstract realm of ideas to the physical realm of the operation of the brain. The brain and the mind are not the same thing. Now, some people argue they are, <clears throat> but I'm sure that you can easily distinguish between the gray stuff in your head and things like dreams, creativity, love, uh, ideas. Where do they sit in the brain? Are they just chemical reactions or electrical impulses? That's too reductionist. That's like saying that a person is a collection of atoms or a collection of organs or a collection of any physical substances. That just isn't the case. Now, I'm not going as far as to say that we have something like a spirit or a soul in the lines of early Christianity, uh, modern Christianity, or Buddhism, or anything of that nature. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is that there is definitely a realm, and I'm going to call it a realm of consciousness, that is not reducible to physical things. Now here's a very um, interesting intersection between modern physics and religion. Namely that consciousness has become part of physics all of a sudden. Not got a whole lot of supporters, but there are some who are arguing that the physical world exists because of consciousness, that somehow consciousness creates reality. <laughs> well, from a personal point of view, I would say that's fairly obviously true in a guarded way. That is, I'm not willing to say that my consciousness creates all of reality, but it certainly creates the reality that I'm aware of. And what consciousness is, is a deep philosophical and scientific problem right now. So now I have my segue into next week's video and points beyond, which is to discuss consciousness. What is consciousness? What is consciousness in physical terms, in terms of psychology, philosophy, theology? What is it in terms of, let's say, Buddhism? Like Buddhists are arguing that one of the principal um, directions that meditation takes is awareness that your consciousness is a small part of a universal consciousness, that you become one with everything. And 
that is also beginning to emerge in the realm of physics. Now, I'm certainly not arguing that physics is becoming more Buddhist. <laughs> certainly not. The ideas within Buddhism and the ideas within physics are completely different. But I am reminded of some very modern Christian theologians who, when asked what God is, give answers such as the foundation of being. That is, they are some kind of modernist existentialist and then points beyond. Well, that's a very complex area that I don't want to get into right now, but next week I'm going to talk much more about the nature of consciousness in general, but in particular I'm going to start connecting the dots between psychology, philosophy, theology, and physics. <laughs> so, until then, if you like this video, then subscribe, tell your friends, and Tuesday I'll provide you with another recipe.